Hello operators, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech North. We have finally made our way back to the Zygu G90 on the channel, but this time we're going to be taking a look at getting started with data mode communications using the Zygu G90. So we're going to talk about the radio's settings, we're going to talk about the connections between the radio and the audio interface, and we're also going to talk about the settings for the different pieces of software. And what am I going to say next? Well, if you stick with me, I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. There's a couple of different ways for setting up the Zygu G90 for data modes. I'm going to give you a couple of different options, but then I'm going to show you what I believe is the best option for the best results when operating portable with the Zygu G90. Undoubtedly, many of us would have ordered the CE19 expansion card for interfacing with amplifiers, with audio interfaces, or with the computer sound card inside our laptops or desktops. The CE19's job is to act as sort of a breakout box between the Zygu G90 and your computer sound card or audio interface. It has connectors for audio in, audio out, and ground. It has a mini DIM port allowing connections from the accessory port on the G90 to the inputs and outputs on the CE19. And it also has a breakout for the push to talk circuit, triggering the push to talk on your radio. But that's not actually needed. We'll talk about that later on. So the CE19 includes, of course, itself and a series of connectors and cables to allow you to interface directly to your computer's sound card. Using this kit, I was able to connect the CE19 to the Zygu G90 and to create an audio I.O. cable, input and output cable, to connect directly to my laptop or computer sound Now, card. before we go too much further, there's one feature on the Zygu G90 which is critical to data mode communications. And this feature is Vox Circuit. This means you can enable the Vox on the radio and without any CAT control or external software, you can trigger the push to talk in the radio simply using the audio output from your data mode app. This is a pretty critical feature for the portable operator who's trying to avoid the mess of wires. Still, the CE19 is an excellent breakout box simplifying desktop data mode communications. It also includes everything required in the kit to interface your computer sound card with your G90. Now the CE19 breakout board might be a nice and easy way, but it's definitely not the best or only way. Let me show you some others. If you're a portable operator, this method is probably going to be very interesting for you. In this example, I'm omitting the CE19 breakout board entirely, and I'm using a ZLP Mini Pro SE audio interface connected directly to the accessory port in the back of the radio. Now, without any doubt, an external audio interface with the custom cable to the accessory output of the G90 will give us the best data mode results. It also provides us with a cleaner installation than the mess of wires we have with the CE19. So this method requires one wire going to the radio and a second wire going to your laptop or desktop. Here we can see the CE19 coming from the Zygu G90 up top on top of the laptop, the cable coming from the G90 to the CE19, and of course the CE19 with the audio cables going into the laptop. This type of setup isn't bad at home or with a desktop computer, but again, out in the field, we want to get rid of as many cables as we can. Now something else you may have noticed here. I'm using the CE19 connected with the mini DIN connector to the back of the radio. But coming out of the CE19 between the audio cables and the laptop, I'm using a cheap USB sound card I got from eBay. This is the same sound card I've used in my Raspberry Pi videos. I've just removed the outer casing to make it a bit smaller. Now, if someone said to me, what's my favorite setup for data mode communications, I would say it would have to be this external audio interface with a custom cable going to the accessory port on the back of the G90. And I don't even use the CAT control cable 
for data mode communications. It's just a lot simpler doing it with an audio interface. Now, regardless of what you decide to use, the CE19 or the external audio interface or the cheap USB sound card, the radio settings are going to be pretty much the same. So let's go through my radio settings, settings which we know are already working with FT8 or WSJTX, JS8 Call, and FL Digi. If we're not using the CAT control interface, and I recommend you don't because we can change the frequency ourselves, then you want to go ahead and enable the Vox control. The next thing we have to do is change the input from mic to line input. This lets your radio know we're going to expect audio in from the accessory port on the back of the radio. So mic, of course, is for the handheld microphone and line is for the accessory port on the back of the rig. Now we're gonna long press that function button so that we can access the incoming and outgoing audio levels. First, you're gonna scroll down to menu number five. Menu number five is input audio level. So I found the best results with an input audio level of 10. I've been able to decode signals coming in with an insanely low signal to noise ratio and it's working well for me so far. Audio out level on menu 6 I leave at 15. This has given me between 96 and 100 on the ALC which is basically zero ALC on any other radio. And again that's working for me very well so far. Another setting I found which works best when it's disabled is the AGC. So make sure that's disabled on your G90. You'll know it's disabled because there's two lines next to the AGC icon on the display. Now, the next setting is the power level of the radio, and I'm generally running the radio at 18 watts. Now, some people have said they've had trouble with heat or the radio overheating, but if your ALC is set correctly, you're not going to have an overheating radio. So I'm running the G90 at 100% duty cycle with FT8 or JS8 call without any overheating issues at all. But please remember, I'm at the North Pole. Here's what your ALC should look like when you're testing. I'm usually hovering someplace between 95 to 100 ALC. That's an incredibly clean signal on this radio. And remember, with data modes, people are going to be able to decode you much better if you have a clean signal than if your signal is overdriven. Now, as I've mentioned previously, I rarely use CAT control, but I'm sure some of you are curious how I use it when it's actually in use. The G90 comes with a USB cable which can be used for CAT control or for upgrading the firmware. When you want to use that cable for a CAT control, you can go ahead and plug it into the lower socket of the head unit. That's the CAT control and firmware update port. Now, if you're using Windows or Mac or something like that, you'll need to go ahead and download and install the drivers before you plug in this USB cable to your computer. I'm using a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi and Linux distributions have the drivers built in. So now I'm gonna show you how to set up FL Rig for rig control for the Zygu G90. If you're using multiple data mode applications like WSJTX, JS8, and FL Digi, this will give you one application to set up for all of those different programs. I also find this to be the most reliable rig control application for the G90. Now the Zygu G90 isn't in FL Rig yet, however, it shares many of the same commands with the IC7100, so that's what we're going to use and select. We're going to select the IC7100 in the top box, select the correct USB interface in the center box, and for the baud rate, select the correct baud rate for your radio. Now we can restart the app and test it out. So when we're talking about data mode communications like FT8, JS8 call, or uh, the different modes of FL Digi, we're usually talking about frequency control and push to talk. Those are the most critical aspects of CAT control. 
Now, I'll warn you up front, the Zygu G90 hasn't been adopted yet by FL Rig or the Hamlib library. So all of the critical functions of cat control are here, but some of the odds and ends won't work. I believe it's only a matter of time before the Zygu G90 is adopted by Hamlib or FL Rig. At least I hope so. Anyway, as I said in the beginning of the video, we don't actually need rig control because we can change the frequency ourselves and the radio has a built-in Vox circuit. This means we don't need cat control for push to talk. As you can see, as I manipulate the frequencies in FL rig, those frequencies are mimicked onto the display of the Zygu G90. So far, I can adjust the volume, I can change the mode, I can change the frequency by any measure of steps, and I can even manually trigger the push to talk at the bottom right of that FL rig screen. But I think now we can go ahead and take a look at WSJTX, at JS8 Call, and at FL rig, and look at the settings there and how they pertain to the Zygu G90 with FL rig. So when we're using FL rig as the master device, I mean, it's the controller for the radio. We need to start that up first before we start up WSJTX, JS8 Call, or FL Digi. So I start it up, then I minimize it. Now we can start up WSJTX and immediately go over to the settings for the radio. And don't worry if you're not using a Raspberry Pi, it's very similar on every operating system. When we get those settings open, we can scroll over to the radio tab and select FL Rig as our rig. Not Zygu, not ICOM or anything like that. Just select FL Rig. Now because we're using FL Rig to control the radio, of course we can go ahead and select CAT for push to talk. Otherwise, if you were operating the radio manually, we would select Vox for push to talk. And none for the radio. Now we can go ahead and click test cat to make sure everything's working properly. But if it works in FL rig, it'll work in WSJTX as well. Now, if you haven't done so already, you'll need to go over to the audio tab and select your audio device. I've also selected mono for the audio coming from the audio interface. Now we can close down these settings and see how WSJTX is working. If everything is set up correctly, the radio will mimic the frequency you've selected in the app. We should also start to see stations populating the band activity box. Now we can test that the radio actually transmits by pushing the tune button. We can also adjust the outgoing audio level for the ALC by adjusting the lever on the right side of the app. So that's it for WSJTX. Now we can go ahead and try JS8 Call. Just as it was with WSJTX, with JS8 Call, we're gonna hit File and Settings and move over to that Radio tab. Once again, we're going to select the Radio tab and choose FL Rig as our radio. Now, if you're using CAT Control, go ahead and select CAT as your push to talk. And again, if you're not using the CAT Control, Select None for the radio and Vox as your push to talk. Once again, go ahead and click that Test Cat button and it should turn green. Next, we'll scroll over to the Audio tab and select our incoming and outgoing audio device. If you also have another audio device connected to your machine, you can select that Notifications audio device as well. But that's not important now. So we're going to save those settings and then we're going to click the frequency spot in the app to put JS8 call on the correct frequency. We can also make sure the radio is operating as we expect it to. So now we have cat control working, we have push to talk working, and now we should verify if the audio input and output is also working. So let's go ahead and send a heartbeat out with JS8 call. So I'm sending out a heartbeat with the slow mode of JS8 call. Now, if everything is working perfectly, I should get at least one acknowledgement back from a station with an included signal report. I'm gonna leave this real time and explain to you 
what slow mode actually is in JS8 Call. Slow mode is the most narrow of the four modes in JS8 Call. It's the low power or QRP station's best friend. You're not going to have a fast chat or QSO in this mode, but you're definitely going to get your signal through with very low power. All right, that's just about done sending out. Now let's wait for an acknowledgement, hopefully from at least one station. And actually, it looks like we got more than one acknowledgement. We've got three acknowledgements. Ireland, Germany, and Sweden, not bad. Anyway, at least we know it's working. So now let's go ahead and move over to FLDG, set that up, and um, we'll be all done. So when you start FLDG, go ahead and click Configure and Config Dialog. Now just like we did in WSJTX and JS8 Call, we're going to move over to the Rig Control selection and select FL Rig as our Rig Control. All I had to do here was click Enable. I left all the other settings the same, I saved this dialog, and my transceiver started working perfectly. And as you remember with WSJTX and JS8 Call, this isn't all we have to do. We should go to the Audio Devices tab and also select the correct audio interface for incoming and outgoing audio. I know you're getting tired of hearing this, but once again, just as we did with WSJTX and JS8 Call, we'll select that USB audio codec. Once you've done that, save those settings, close the dialog, and let's go see if everything works. So I thought I would try some PSK31 on 40 meters. I know at least the rig control is working because as I manipulate the frequency in FL Digi, I can see my radio mimicking what I'm doing with the frequency in FL Digi. Now, if we start seeing some stations populating the screen, then we'll know that everything is set up correctly. Well, PSK31 started off rather slow, but it started to pick up after a while. Once again, everything's working. We've got WSJTX, we've got JS8 Call, and we've got FL Digi all working with the Zygu G90. For those of you interested in the Zygu G90, I've got a couple of videos that came before this one that I've left in the description for you. Those videos are also pinned in the first comment along with the table of contents for this video. And look guys, if you enjoyed this video, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You can also give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, it's up to you. And your comments are always appreciated. One last thing before I forget, this video was made possible by our friends at zygu.eu and pileupdx.com. If you're supporting this channel through Patreon, PayPal, or simply sharing my content, you're absolutely magnificent and I couldn't do it without you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, leave me a comment and a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching.